No company has been able to bridge the gap between real and simulated motorsports as much as Fnatic. With a dominant 80% share in the market for high-end sim racing wheels and accessories, how did a small German company revolutionize the virtual racing industry and become synonymous with motorsport as a whole? Thomas Jakermeyer founded the company in 1997. As an avid early PC gaming enthusiast, he noticed an opportunity in the high-quality PC gaming equipment sector as there were very few companies in the market. Jakermeyer quickly recognized the decisive role that input devices would play on performance, reality, and fun, and thus PC gaming hardware became the company's specialty. I should mention that the company is named Endor and develops products under their brand name Fnatic. In its early years, Fnatic sold a variety of PC gaming products like joysticks, trackballs, and wheels, but it wasn't until the release of the successful Fnatic Le Mans wheel that they shifted their attention to some racing hardware. Soon after, Fnatic released its first ever officially licensed wheel for PlayStation, the Speedster 2, which Sony marketed worldwide and put the company on the map. Running the momentum of the Speedster's 2 success, Fnatic developed connections with major players in the same racing industry. They continued to produce officially licensed hardware for Sony and worked with Turn 10 Studios to develop the first ever Forza Motorsport licensed wheel. With the release of the massively popular Xbox 360, Fnatic developed the Porsche 911 Turbo S and the Porsche 911 GT2 steering wheels for the Xbox 360, which were the only force feedback wheels for the console at release. However, the immense competitive advantage that they had with their force feedback technology was only one of two factors that made Fnatic a dominant force. At around the mid-2000s, Fnatic was now a competitive player in the sim racing market. However, it wasn't until it began working with premium automotive companies that Fnatic really began to separate itself from its competitors. Arguably the most vital strategic decision for its success, Fnatic obtained exclusive rights from Porsche to develop an officially licensed wheel. After creating Porsche replica wheels, it continued to align itself with luxury automotive manufacturers, this time BMW, with the creation of the BMW M3 GT2 replica wheel. This is where Fnatic began creating the distinction between toys and true sim racing replicas, which they are best known for today. At the heart of every successful business is the product, and it's no coincidence that Fnatic is known for the highest end mass market gear. I'm going to refrain from saying much here simply because I've never actually owned Fnatic gear because I'm a broke college student, but it's more than fair to say that Fnatic is renowned for their high quality reliable products. And from what I've seen and heard, even without owning their gear, I still find it really hard to disagree. Whether you're watching a YouTube video related to sim racing, reading a motorsport blog, watching an online race, or literally anything else related to sim racing, there's a very high chance that you will see the Fnatic logo scattered around. This is because the company has easily amassed the largest online presence in the sim racing hardware scene. Having their logo displayed in the most popular sim racing titles like Assetto Corsa Competizione and the F1 series to name a few, and having all your favorite YouTubers and even real life drivers using a wheelbase with a large bold Fnatic logo on it entices potential customers to purchase their gear. A critical aspect of companies who sell higher end products is to create a sense of desire. Just as celebrities dressed in designer clothing make 30 year old moms go and buy Louis Vuitton purses, Fnatic creates their own appeal in a multitude of ways. For starters, their gear isn't cheap, and although their high quality and attention to detail are a result of this, consumers are also paying for the brand name. I mean, look at all the Formula 1 drivers who stream on Twitch. What gear are they using? Look at the liveries in a bunch of online and even real life race cars. Do you recognize the logo? Look at professional esports teams. Do you see a sponsor? Fnatic creates a sense of desire for their products like no other sim racing manufacturer, and it's the reason they are so sought after by many. It's also important to recognize other aspects of Fnatic's brand that make them so dominant. With their high quality products and respected brand image, the company has amassed a large following of loyal customers who are willing to spend big bucks to have the new fancy gear. This can be seen by the fact that a lot of the times, their new releases are sold out within hours or days, and by seeing the general anticipation that builds up when they have their yearly sales. Looking at their social media presence, there's also no question as to who is the most popular among consumers. And we can't forget the fact that Fnatic tends to lead the industry in terms of technology and innovation. I mean, they're literally releasing a sim racing wheel that will work on the real life GT4 BMW car, and Thrustmaster still shows no signs of releasing a direct drive wheelbase. And talking about Thrustmaster, let's talk about how they stack up to their competition. Thrustmaster, Logitech, and Fnatic tend to be thrown around in the same category when talking about sim racing hardware. And although they are far and about the largest players in the market, there are also some very clear distinctions between them. Logitech is unquestionably targeting the beginner, low-budget market. 
Thrustmaster does as well, although they also offer higher end mid range products, some of which stack up well against Fnatic's offerings. But I think everyone can agree that Fnatic mainly focuses on the high end, high budget market, with some products aimed at the mid range consumer. So, although Logitech and Thrustmaster are definitely competitors who garner a lot of attention from beginner consumers, Fnatic focuses on garnering their attention after the fact, now that they have made their way into the sim racing world. This is why we see so many Logitech owners selling their wheels on eBay, with the description saying upgrading to Fnatic soon. I would argue that Fnatic is more worried about the boutique sim racing manufacturers like Asher and Turn Racing, and others who target the consumer looking for hyper realism in their sim racing setup. I'm only in my first year of business school, so I might be completely off, but this is my channel so I get to say whatever I want. To wrap up everything I've said, Fnatic's presence in real and virtual motorsport high-end and high-quality products, and overall innovative nature have developed a desire for their products which make them so dominant in the sim racing scene. Fnatic is literally bridging the gap between the real and virtual world, while Logitech is releasing the same wheel with a black dial 5 years later, and Thrustmaster seems to have the same website they made in the 90s. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments, do you agree with me, do you disagree, and consider hitting the like button if this video brought any value to you. This video took like 20 hours to make, and pressing the like button takes like 3 seconds, so, anyways, with all that being said, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day.